spotter. Hi, welcome to the Teachings of Meaning. And today the patron's request was, you know, how do you use these laws, this way of living, subjective thinking, the laws of mind, in parenting your children? For example, you know, uh, you got teenagers, because this is where it usually comes into play, and they want to go to a football game by themselves, or a movie by themselves, or even a concert by themselves. Who knows? They, they want to do something that, in your mind, is not safe. <laughs> okay. So, that's your fear. Alright? So, if it's taking you by surprise, the response is, let me think about that, you know, and then when you have some time, you know, taking a bath or a shower and you just think about it and leave it with God, you know, if you're not sure what to do and he'll give you the answer and the main focus for you is God is in everyone and everything, including your child. And that means infinite intelligence is at your disposal to ask God to guide your child, you know, and that you understand your child is safe and secure and has their own journey to march to, you know. And for myself, what I did with my children was uh, when they wanted to do these kind of things, it was, well, you know, I trust your judgment. And okay, but here's the deal. If your gut is telling you get out of here, if you're feeling like something bad's happening, if that little voice is telling you get out of here, <laughs> you call me and I don't care where you are, what you're doing, you know, what you've been doing, I don't care come and get you, no questions asked, you know, and it'll be great, don't worry, it, nothing will come down on your head for anything, you know, if you just call and say, I have to get out of here, <laughs> and we'll be there, so you understand you're never trapped, it doesn't matter where you are, because we're not going to judge you on anything. You know, we won't care. We'll just be glad you called. You don't ignore that little voice. Every time you do, you're sorry. Don't do it. So, here's the deal. You promise me that you will listen to that little voice. You will listen to your gut. You will listen to your instinct. And you will call if you feel like there's trouble brewing. And get out of there. And we'll come get you. It'll be all good doesn't matter, right? And they usually will agree to that. And all three of my children took me up on it one time. And they weren't in trouble. I was just hugging them and saying, I'm so glad you called. You know? <laughs> and then usually they poured out what was going on. You know, I was so scared. I can't believe it. I went to this stupid party, you know, and you point things out as they tell you, you know, and, you know, the parents weren't there. Oh, well, there's the first clue. There's trouble. <laughs> you know, and you're laughing. Yeah, yeah. And they were tearing the house up, you know. Ah, oh, there's the second clue. <laughs> yeah, that's when I was really like, got to get out of here. <laughs> you know, and they will be sharing with you and you'll be so happy that they're right there jibber jabbering away about their experience. You know, everyone has to learn to think. You know, and the whole idea is let them be free to do that. And you set boundaries, you know, and the boundaries aren't limits. The boundaries are if, you know, if you feel this and you call me, you know, if you hear this, you call me, you know, that they are safe and secure. Then, you know, 
if you're still worried as they leave and you're smiling by, <laughs> but inside you're like dying, you know, just because to you as a parent, it doesn't feel good. You've been fed all kinds of stories. Okay, so you just go with them. You say, I'm leaving the safety of my child in your hands, Father. I know they're safe and secure inside you, and, and we're all inside you, so I know she's safe and secure. I know infinite intelligence has gotten, you know, the, these kind of things. And, you know, I'm just leaving this in your hands. Okay, I'm leaving this in the hands of you, and I know it's all going to work out. Great are the creative intelligence. You know, great is God. God is good. And go into the aspects of God to feel a little better. And then go watch a show or you know, have a have a bowl of ice cream. <laughs> Relax. It's all good. You know, and one of the boundaries that you set are, you know, granted time limits. You need to be home by midnight. You know, you need to be home by one AM depending on how old they are, what's going on, you know, and the reason is, this is my house, if everyone's inside by 1 a.m., then I know everyone's home, everything's safe and secure, so if somebody does go scratching on the door at 2 a.m., I know that's not anybody here, because <laughs> we're all inside, all right, and I can respond accordingly, if you're not here, and now I'm worried, okay? Now I'm worried. Who's scratching at the door? You know, is, it, is that my son? You know, open the door. You know, and it's not. It's the boogeyman. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it, you set boundaries because it's your house. You know, I, you know, I understand. Yes, you can go to this concert, but you have to be home by midnight. You know. You had to be on by midnight. But mom, no, I, I, everybody has to be here in the house, doors locked by midnight. And that's just how it is. You can go, you can go have fun, you can go by yourself, I don't care. It's fine, go enjoy yourself, but you have to be on by midnight. So I can sleep. I can't sleep if you're not here. And I need to sleep. Okay, so it's my house and you, you have to be here by midnight so I can sleep, okay? And it's, you're telling them it's about you, you know, it, ha, it, ha, it is, you know, it's not because I don't trust you or anything else, it's I can't sleep if you're not here. I need everybody in the house by midnight. <laughs> everybody, you know, and then as they get older, okay, by 1 a.m. And then when they try to stretch that, it's go get your own house. You can stay out all night if you want to then. But also, I'll be able to sleep. I can't sleep if you're out all night long. You know? No. And your head's supposed to rest here. No, I can't. I can't. So, it's, you know, understanding yourself. And it's not a judgment, and you're trying to defy me, or anything like that. It's literally explaining to them why. I can't sleep if you're not here. This is my house, and your head is supposed to rest here. You know, and I need my sleep so I can be, you know, ready for work in the morning. Or, you know, ready to make lunches for the day and do my thing. You know, whatever. And... It, they'll understand, they will, you know, they might pout a little and stuff, but they will come to understand, and you just go to God, they have God in their hearts too, and the one in your heart will go tell the one in their heart, and the Bible goes on and on about spies, like for the story of Joshua and the walls of Jericho, you know, and you got a couple of them, <laughs> the human imagination, Christ in us all, and uh, God. So, you know, these two are one. They're one mind. Okay? And God gave His Son, His imaginative, creative power to you and subjected Himself and His Son to you. You tell them, you know, 
Thank you for keeping my kids safe and secure. Okay. You know, and even if they don't call you or anything like that, people will appear that will help them. Now, they may help them in a way you don't like, like the clips at the beginning and the end of this uh, teaching show, but they're still there to help. And they're still angels, and they're still doing God's will. God wanted them there for a reason. God wanted that guy who knew how to do just that there for a reason. And he did it. Because yeah. <laughs> he's good. He never misses. He always hits the target. You know, it's that kind of confidence in understanding that you really do have two consciousnesses inside you. And they've been battling it out. Okay? Which one's in charge of imagination? The creative force. You know, and God's going to win. <laughs> okay? He's going to win. We follow Him. We're the consciousness for the creative force. All right? And these two work together all the time, whether you realize it or not. Because what you believe is wrapped around your heart. And so He mirrors you. God is mirroring you. All right? So you just keep it up. I'm a clear and open channel for God. May the will of God be done. You know, I'm a vessel for the Lord. You know, it's not your will. Your will is nothing. That's what you learn here. You know, no, you can't force it. Your will is nothing. It's God's will. The story is over. It's gonna happen the way God wills it to happen. And he's already made everybody's story. <laughs> so, it's just play your role and enjoy it and understand that it, it, you're a channel for the Lord. You're a lamp for the Lord. You're a perfect expression of God. You're like a Fabergé. Not another like you. Never will be. And it's the same for your children. And you tell them that. That's writing it on their hearts. I don't know how many times I said that to my kids. You know, don't run out into the street. You know, without looking both ways. There's not another you. I can't make another you. You know, that's impossible. That, that can't happen. You're precious. You know, you're the most precious thing in the world. All of you are precious. And they would get mad at me. When, it's, Which one? You love me the most, don't you? I love you all. The same. You can't, Mom. Yes, I can. He's the best. He's the best. He's the best. You're all different. You're all beautiful. I love you all. The best. You know? There's no favorites. Come on, man. You're all perfect. Oh, Mom. <laughs> you know, I, I thought so. I was their mom. I understood that. You know, and you're, nothing's going to make that change. Okay, nothing. I don't care what you say or do. I'm still going to think my children are perfect. And infinite intelligence follows. And they're prosperous and abundant and have a beautiful life. Okay, and, and they're walking their road and they'll get there. You know, and I love them. And that's all you can really do for your children. Is to teach them to listen to their instincts and gut. To understand that that's not just your human baseness. That's God talking to you. The feeling is the secret. Feelings are God. And he's talking to you. Okay? Because there's only one feeling. Love. And all the others come from it. And frustration, you know, can bring trouble. Relax. You know, and go to God. And just... You know, whoever calls upon me will be saved. And that's, you know, I am saved. My child is saved, you know, from my fear of something happening. You know, I leave it in your hands, and I know it will all work out perfectly. You know, thank you, Father. And this, you leave it way up high so that everyone gets their 
end. And you're not interfering with that in any way. You're allowing God's will to flow. So I hope this helps. It's um, it's keeping it up high so God wills flow so everybody gets what they want. And understanding that, you know, if you're happy, then everything else follows. The riches, the abundance, all that stuff. And it doesn't matter what you're doing or how happy doing. You know, it, it will just follow you. So I hope this helps. Blessings to you. And thank you. Thank you for being me. What if you miss? I wouldn't know.